Well, Ohio State has booked their ticket to the Big Ten Championship. Yeah, they'll be playing Wisconsin in a few weeks, and that looks to be an amazing game. But before they get there, they have to face their bitter rival, Michigan. And Michigan has had an interesting year, to say the least. Their offense has struggled, but their defense has still been one of the best in the entire country. They're almost perfect on the year. However, you know, they haven't been the best, especially last week against Wisconsin. They gave up a few more points and yards than they probably would have hoped for. But when you're only giving up 17 points on average, that's pretty incredible. And their strength of schedule, they've played a lot of tough teams this year. Their three losses all go to teams that are currently ranked in the top 25. And two of those are to top five teams, which is just amazing as far as strength of schedule goes. It sucks that they lost those games, but they're not the worst losses in the world. And they also have history on their side. Um, they have 10 more wins than Ohio State in their 120-year history, which is quite a few when you consider how great both of these teams have been over the last, you know, 120-plus years. Well, Michigan has nothing to lose. If they win this, they could still earn a possible playoff bid. Not likely, but they still could. And if Ohio State loses, they are definitely out of the contention. Yeah, losing a game this late in the season is a complete death sentence for any team trying to make it into the playoff. One thing Ohio State does have is a very high-powered offense. Uh, JT Barrett only had a mediocre performance last week. He only threw for 58% for 141 yards, two touchdowns. He was taken out due to a wrist injury. Doesn't look like it's going to be an issue going into this game. Michigan isn't the only team with a great defense in this matchup. The last two weeks combined, they've only given up 300 yards. That's huge, especially after overcoming that loss to Iowa. Those losses have really led to a lot of inconsistency as far as Ohio State goes this year. They've had a pretty major up and down season. They've had close games against teams that they definitely shouldn't have had close games against. They've had a lot of cupcake games. The bottom part of the Big Ten is absolute garbage this year and has been for a while now. And that's really hurt just their overall strength of schedule. And their two losses, you know, early on in the season, they got blown out by Oklahoma in Columbus of all places and then a couple weeks ago they got hit over the head with a frying pan and lost by almost 30 to Iowa in what was another just completely pitiful showing by the entire Ohio State Buckeyes team and that just goes to show you how inconsistent this team is and I don't know whether it's the senior leadership on the team or just leadership in general whether it's a coaching issue that they seem to have they always show up to big games they completely demolished Penn State and was in control of that game a majority of the game. They've been in control of most of their games this year. But for whatever reason, they have random games, whether it be against a good Oklahoma team early on, whether it be against an above-average Iowa team later in the season, or another early game against Indiana, a game that they should have just completely taken control of and blown out. Michigan has had a lot of problems as well, though. They have the quarterback inconsistency that's been going on this season. They're on, they were on their third last week, Brandon Peters, looking like the push this offense has needed. Definitely a guy Jim Harbaugh was looking to to kind of get things going after Spate and O'Corn just were not cutting it. He left the game last week during a shoulder injury, though, and that kind of leaves the quarterback issue up in the air more. Will he play this week? As of now, he's questionable. If he doesn't return, O'Corn is going to pick it back up. He has the most yards this season. Uh, for, of the quarterbacks with 761. But when you look at his touchdowns, he has one passing touchdown and five interceptions. He turns the ball over a lot and probably has one of the lowest quarterback ratings in the nation right now at 99. Peters is definitely a guy that this team needs going into a big game like Ohio State. Without him, their productivity is going to be severely limited on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, and they've had a lot of, let's just say frustration, for lack of a better word, at all positions. Jim Harbaugh was seen just completely yelling and just chewing out their kicker uh, just a couple weeks ago for missing three straight field goals. I don't think it's going to come down to a couple kicks. I think that Chase Winovich is going to have a huge game this week. He's one of the better defensive players in the entire country as a defensive lineman. He's had a pretty interesting career. He actually started off as a tight end as a freshman, now as a junior. He looks to really make a mark in what could possibly be his last chance in this historic rivalry. 
He leads the Big Ten in tackles for loss with 16 and a half. He also leads the Big Ten with sacks with eight. He adds a couple forced fumbles and a fumble recovery to that stat line. And even last year, he played defensive in. This year, he's playing inside and outside on the defensive line. He's extremely versatile. He plays all over the place. Where he is on the defensive side of the ball, offenses have to key in on him and generally just run to the exact opposite side of the field to avoid him at all costs. J.K. Dobbins, the true freshman, is a big playmaker. Ohio State looks to get the ball to as much as they can. He's had 1,089 rushing yards this season, averages 7.3 yards per carry, a very efficient ball carrier, very explosive, makes the right cuts, and gets behind that defense. He has six touchdowns, which is kind of surprising based on the numbers he's been putting up, but he definitely has been very pivotal in this Ohio State offense this year, despite some of the inconsistencies they have had. Yeah, he's been one of the few consistents that they've had, whether JT Barrett's been up or down, he's always gotten his. And that's pretty impressive for a guy who's so young, and it seems like he has a lot more say than most freshmen do on a team coming in. Definitely. I am looking for Ohio State to win this game, though. I think they have the better defense here and their offense is going to be better. Michigan has had those inconsistencies, especially if Peters has to sit the bench this game. I just don't see the quarterback situation getting any better. And defense is great, but if you don't have an offense, you're not going to get any points. No, and this is another really interesting game as far as the college football playoff is concerned. If Ohio State does lose and goes to the Big Ten Championship, Wisconsin's not guaranteed a spot. Even if they are undefeated, they haven't played anybody and if Ohio State drops a significant amount after a loss to an unranked Michigan team this week, that could really cost Wisconsin and the Big Ten's chances as a whole and really leave the field wide open for who knows who at this point. And if Ohio State wins this game against you know a tough Michigan opponent who has been ranked most of the season, they have a chance if they go in and beat Wisconsin to possibly jump Wisconsin and make it into the fourth and final playoff spot. I am going to have to go with Michigan in this game, though. I think defense wins championships. They don't necessarily have the offense, but in a huge rivalry like this, players tend to have abnormal performances, and hopefully Michigan's able to find one abnormally great performance on the offensive side of the ball. Griffin's cheering for an upset. Yeah. (laughs) Why would you want to make anything more crazy in this league already? Chaos. That way a Pac-12 team can get in. Of course. All <laughs> about the Pac-12 for Griffin. Yeah. You're it's not going to be SEC. Oregon, though. No. If you enjoyed this matchup, be sure to check out our other rivalry games. And also, if you haven't checked out our Dizzy Sports Challenge, check it out. It's about five minutes of pure laughter as you watch both of us fail at sports. <laughs> it was a great time. It's about five minutes of watching us just repeatedly fall on our face and be possibly the most unathletic you could imagine. Yeah, Griffin definitely was a little messed up by spinning around too many times. My, uh, my knee is still cut up after that. <laughs> still still bleeding. The great thing is you don't feel it, though, because you're just so messed up. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it was bad. I face planted, and I didn't even feel it. I was laughing. Best gif you will ever see. That is true. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm Janae Muchmore. And I'm Griffin Parkrose. And you're watching Red Zone to End Zone. Have a great weekend.